so after learning about the bond length and the bond uh, strength in this uh, video you are going to learn about a polar covalent bond and the reason for polarity in a covalent bond the electronegativity so let's do some examples of covalent compounds and uh, as i said before it is formed between two non metals or combine hydrogen or group 4 5 6 7 elements combine with each other a covalent bond is formed some of the example given over there are chlorine bromine oxygen nitrogen and then i have given you some compounds with hydrogen also hcl water ammonia methane etc now the number of bonds formed between the elements depends on the number of electrons they share for example consider say uh, cl and cl they share uh, one electron each that means there is two uh, electrons between the two cl and hence a single bond is formed but in case of oxygen because each oxygen has six outer electronic configuration so needs two more hence uh, in between two oxygens we have two pairs of electron and hence a double bond is formed and in case of nitrogen with has five outer electrons and in order to complete the octet it needs three more electrons therefore each nitrogen shares three electrons and hence there are three pairs of electrons in between the two nitrogen and a triple bond is formed so point to be noted is each bond meets two electrons and uh, all the compounds of carbon they form covalent bonds and um, compounds of carbon have a special uh, chemistry allotted to them and that we call as organic chemistry so we just revised on what a covalent bond is so you know that when uh, now we are going to do what is a polar covalent bond is consider a bond formed between cl and cl and uh, you know that it shares one electron from each of the cl and the electrons are shared equally because if both the elements are the same but at the same time consider the bond formed between hydrogen and cl each one gives one electron do you think the electrons are shared equally or whether one of the element gets a larger share how will you know which elements gets a larger share the fact which governs which one will get a larger share is called as electronegativity be careful and it's not something similar to electron affinity which we did before this is electronegativity electronegativity of an element will tell me well, whether it whether it is getting a larger or a lesser share of the electrons when it forms a covalent bond so how do we apply this to our covalent bond and still i have been told what is this polar covalent bond is let's go further so i introduced a new term electronegativity so what is it electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract the shared electrons in a covalent bond towards itself so we saw in hydrogen and chlorine one of the elements the elements are different it's possible that one of the element attracts the electron more towards itself and element with the higher electronegativity will attract the electron more towards itself and uh, how does it change in a periodic table electronegativity increases in a period and electronegativity decreases in a group the trend is something similar to what we saw in an electron affinity also and uh, some of the most electronegative elements which it will be good if you know are uh, fluorine on the right hand right hand most corner top of the periodic table is the most electronegative element then comes oxygen and nitrogen it's good to know that the most electronegative elements are f o and n because it will be useful to you in later also for uh, some other uh, ch chapter then nitrogen and chlorine have almost equal electronegativity but nitrogen comes before chlorine then bromine carbon hydrogen this is the general trend uh, or some of the common elements if you know the electronegativity order it will be useful when you are answering questions so after electronegativity let's see how it is related to polarity so consider the formation of h and cl and you know that hydrogen contributes one electron cl contributes one electron and from the table of the periodic table uh, i have taken the electronegativity of hydrogen to give you an idea i have put in the values also electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 and electronegativity of cl is 
This is an agreement with the trends also. Cl is more electronegative than hydrogen. So because electronegativity of Cl is more, electrons is a tendency to attract electrons and therefore electrons will be attracted more towards Cl. And therefore, the two electrons in between H and Cl, they may not be shared equally. The electrons shift more towards the Cl and hence the chlorine will get a partial negative charge and hydrogen will get a partial positive charge. See, if it was shared equally, H and Cl, both of them will be neutral. But because Cl is more electronegative, the Cl gets a partial negative charge and hydrogen gets a partial positive charge and it is written as delta negative and delta positive. You see that it's not written as a, a total positive and negative. There's a delta next to it that means it is partial. Because of a charge on the bond, because of the difference in the electronegativity, we call the bond as polar. So we get a polar bo uh, covalent bond if the electronegativity of the two elements that share the electrons, um, it is because of the difference in the electronegativity of the two elements that share the electrons. The one with the higher electronegativity gets the larger share of the electrons and makes the bond polar. Let's do some facts on electronegativity. Elements with same electronegativity form pure covalent bond, for example, chlorine. Both the electrons are shared equally between the Cl and there is no polarity in them. But elements with little difference in electronegativity form polar covalent bond. For example, H and Cl, Cl being more electronegative than hydrogen, the electrons move more closer to Cl. And as we saw before, Cl gets a partial negative charge and hydrogen gets a partial positive charge. However, if you have elements which has very large difference in electronegativity, they form ionic bond. For example, sodium and Cl. Sodium uh, has an electronegativity of 0.9 and Cl has an electronegativity of 3, a large difference. Hence, all the electrons are taken away by Cl and sodium gets nothing. Therefore, they don't share. They basically give away that electron and you get an ionic bond. So now, how will you determine when will we get a polar covalent bond or an ionic bond? We can. Uh, there is a um, rule for it. When a bond is formed between electronegativity that differ by less than 0.5, it will be non-polar. And if a bond is formed with electronegativity that differ by 0.5 to 2, if the difference is 0.5 to 2, I get a polar covalent bond. And if a bond is formed with electronegativity that differ by more than 2, the compounds will be ionic. So, a, pure, a polar covalent bond is formed when it between the two elements which differ in electronegativity of 0.5 to 2. If it is less than that, the bond will be non-polar, but 100% non-polar will be there only with, with elements with uh, similar electronegativity or the, with the same elements. Even if it's little difference, even if they say 0.5, but if there is a difference, there will be a little polarity in the bond. I will give you some examples as we go by to make this concept more clear. Just if you want to refer and if you want to know what are the electronegativity, a periodic table with all the electronegativities are given to you. You don't have to memorize any of them. If a question comes, if you want to refer to some uh, table, that's the reason this is being given to you. Before we do some questions on electronegativity, we will make it clear the difference between electron affinity and electronegativity. If you remember, we did electron affinity in the periodic trends. Electron affinity is a tendency of an individual element to attract electron and in its gaseous state. See, an element attracts the electron and whereas the electronegativity is a tendency of an element to attract an electron in a bond. So, electronegativity is in a bond, electron affinity is the ability of an individual element and an electron affinity is experimentally measurable whereas electronegativity is an uh, estimated number. And further, uh, how electron affinity is represented is because Cl in its gas form takes up one electron becomes Cl minus, the energy uh, released in this process is electron affinity. And in case of an electronegativity, it is in a bond H and Cl. Cl attracts the shared electron towards itself and gets a partial negative charge. 
So this is a basic difference between affinity and electronegativity. Electron affinity is for an individual element. Electronegativity is in a bond. So as always, we will do some questions on electronegativity also. Arrange the following with a decreasing order of bond polarity. For your convenience, the electronegativity series, the common one which you are supposed to remember is also given. Fluorine is greater than oxygen, nitrogen and equal to chlorine, bromine, carbon and hydrogen. The first example is hydrogen and Br. Arrange them HBr, HCl, HF and HC. So, how will I know the extent of polarity? So, father the element. Like, if I have a bond between father means, in that series I have given, if father is, hydrogen and chlorine are the farthest. Carbon and hydrogen are the closest. So, father the uh, elements, more will be the polarity. So, hence, H and F being the farthest, the polarity of an H and F bond will be larger than H and O bond and then comes H and C bond, Cl bond and H and Br bond. So, farther they are or larger the difference between the electronegativity, more polar the bond will be. And hence, in that order, HC is the least polar and HF will be the most polar. So, what is the rule? Farther the larger the difference in the electronegativity, or the farther they are in the electronegativity series, the polarity will be more. So, in the given uh, sets, identify the more polar bond. Bromine, bromine, CBR. CBR will be more polar because bromine, bromine will be a non-polar bond. Silicon and Cl, phosphorus and Cl. You just look at the periodic table, you feel that C uh, silicon and chlorine are farther than P and Cl. Then carbon and oxygen, boron and oxygen, the, uh, the bond which will be more polar will be boron and oxygen. So just take up the periodic table for it. Boron belongs to group 3, carbon belongs to group 4 and oxygen belongs to group 6. Carbon chlorine, silicon chlorine and here also silicon chlorine will be more uh, polar because they are farther. So the uh, rule is farther they are more polar it is. One more example is oxygen fluorine and chlorine fluorine. And we know that oxygen and fluorine are next to each other and therefore chlorine-fluorine bond will be more polar.